um, I've prepared for you a small presentation, a little bit of demo for all of these things. So the topic of our presentation for today is um, ChatGPT, but not only, and AI services for the DevOps automation. Um, I think that topic might be useful for the developers as well, because we're just touching the tools, the services, uh, some this kind of context that might be useful in different areas, so no problem. Oops. Um, yeah. And for those who know me, I'm a DevOps architect from Center of Excellence uh, Azure Cluster, uh, as well I'm lead DevOps in one of the entire uh, charity project, the Grainer, uh, as well as I'm trainer, mentor, and coach in SoftServe. Um, I love sport, I love cats, and so on. Um, let's go next. So today we'll be chat about, uh, talk about actually what is ChatGPT and uh, open AI projects. Uh, we'll take a look what the difference between ChatGPT first, second, third, and finally the first edition. Um, that's the most fresh one. When I prepared the presentation, the chat GPT number of uh, like version four was not released yet. Um, we'll take a look about uh, take a look on chat GPT usage for DevOps automation, pros and cons, alternatives, summary, and I've prepared some bonus for you. Um, does any one of you using use chat GPT or did anyone use before? You can raise your hands. I'm using. Okay, cool. It's nice, nice to see. So I think you're familiar at least what it is, uh, or at least heard what it is. Um so um yeah, so chat GPT. It um, actually engine or tool or whatever uh, you can call it. Um, it indexes a huge amount of materials open based over the internet, the open materials. Uh, it train it on some data sets and it's accumulated the knowledges from different domains. Uh, including engineering, software engineering, uh, and basically it has an interface like a chat where you can ask something uh, and uh, just get an answer. Mm, so you might put anything, um, some question here and you'll get an answer. And basically, while you are communicating with ChatGPT, uh, it personalizes all the replies for you. So while you're communicating, it will adjust in the replies based on your questions and based on what you are uh, writing in the chat uh, in the chat window. So what's the advantages? So what's the difference between the previous AI engines and uh, so it provides you a human understandable uh, replies, answers. And uh, it also allows you to follow up. When you ask something, it replies something and you can follow up based on, on, on its reply. So you can ask uh, based on your reply, please elaborate or please explain this topic or please explain this sentence or something like that on this term. And it also could admit the mistakes. Um, about real quick about what's OpenAI. OpenAI uh, was founded, uh, launched by Elon Musk and actually Sam Altman. And uh, Elon Musk already left this company um, as a nonprofit. Firstly, as a nonprofit research organization, and at the purpose of at the goal uh, of this organization was to prevent misuse of AI services. And actually, the mission. This is a mission as um, democratize the access to the artificial in intelligence to make the artificial intelligence services publicly available for all of the people across the world. So pretty good mission as for me 
and uh, currently we have the chat GPT and other AI services and we can use it uh, but actually chat GPT not the only um, not the only project they have been working on so if you go to the open AI uh, open AI site uh, you can find a lot of different projects so chat GPT is one of them but you can also find the DALI E project, which is about generating images based on the uh, text inputs. It could there uh, whisper, and uh, that regarding the might be useful for um, speech recognition and so on, and others and others projects here. So that, that's a. Uh, Oops, sorry, uh, that is an old site from OpenAI, actually. They renewed it. So what is the difference? Um, ChatGPT for now is actually, it's a most fast growing project because it, it achieves 1 million users within five days. To, in comparison to Facebook or Twitter, they do that uh, approximately within a month. So ChatGPT is really the fast growing project. It's a new record. And uh, mm, currently ChatGPT is most useful, but as you might know, the chat uh, and it updated to ChatGPT version 3.5. And currently they release the ChatGPT version 4, which is currently uh, available as a, in, in under subscription. So you would need to subscribe and, and pay something for that. And uh, the difference between each new version of ChatGPT I train it against a bigger data set. And uh, ChatGPT version 3 uh, is able to prepare the contact, it understands the jokes and something like that. And ChatGPT version 4 even can um, write some essays or, or poems or something like that. Uh, it's much and much smarter. I didn't find a lot of information regarding the data set they train it against and, and the tokens layers of this kind, but hopefully this information will appear soon. And let's actually talk how the chat GPT can be useful for the for the our routine, for the DevOps automation, and not only. Um, like my opinion on that is that is pretty useful for research and learning purposes. So you can ask anything to chat GPT that you don't know or you aren't sure, and you start just learning some new materials. Uh, and it replies. Actually, ChatGPT, as you might know, it's aggregate a lot of data inside and it can provide you a summary. I'm pretty like to use just ChatGPT if I'm I, I'm lazy man, uh, to be honest. And and um, versus searching a lot, a lot of materials over the internet, you can ask ChatGPT to summarize some topic for you, and it will it will do that. Uh, you can also use the chat GPT to perform automation work, simple task or um, automation script, whatever. And you might also ask chat GPT to create the documentation for you. Um, the beauty of it, chat GPT can summarize a lot of information and provide you in a consistent way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The first try when we decided to, to ask ChatGPT, um, it actually tried to chat GPT in our real project when we face it with the problem uh, of configuring the um, Amazon API gateway. Amazon API gateway that is that should use the WebSockets on the backend. And based on the documentation, it can't do that, unfortunately. So we asked ChatGPT just to suggest anything for us. And actually it provides us really obvious uh, answer. So uh, to substitute it with an application load balancer and so on. Um, that, that was funny actually. 
Um, yeah, and uh, let's take a look on a quick demo how we can use ChatGPT to generate the uh, actual automate our routines. Uh, I have recorded a couple of videos, but we can use it on a real uh, on a real ChatGPT. Actually, I've, I've updated mine. Um, and previously, I've communicated with ChatGPT version 3.5, as you might see. And when I asked uh, the chat to generate the Docker file for Java application, the reply was pretty, pretty short as for me, but, but correct. Uh, but if I ask the ChatGPT version 4, you, you might see that it generated a longer reply with, with an explanation inside. So it's much, much better as for me um, explain uh, the pieces of code it provides. We can proceed with that and ask ChatGPT to do something more for us. Let's say I prepared some, some presets for task. Uh, let's say, as I mentioned, in, it's able to follow up the, the uh, follow up the replies and I'm just referring to my previous question and ask ChatGPT to elaborate the Docker file and use the multi-staged approach for the, for the Java application. Actually, these things is new for me. I just previously tested it on the ChatGPT 3.5, so I don't know what this replies for now, but it will reply. But it seems everything. Everything seems like correct for me. So we use some image to build the application. Package it and we use some image where we run it. Okay, any any questions, comments for now? Suggestions, I don't know. I have one comment regarding the usage okay. of ChatGPT. Okay. Uh, so just from my experience, this tool is very powerful, but uh, it likes to lie. Uh, so in case yeah. uh, you ask if this tool does, um, like if you can do something with this tool, it, it, it says yes. Like you can do it, but when you actually try it, uh, it's it won't work. Uh, it's, and it's pretty often. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, and we'll... we'll um discuss it a bit later yeah thank you for that note yeah sorry well, can i uh, jump in yeah but uh in this case uh, chat gpt only helps you to solve routine tasks uh, uh, not <laughs> help you to to write a code if you need to comment if you need to i don't know read me uh, that that's it for or you need to compile something uh, let's say for business uh proof of cons yeah for, for business motivation yeah, I agree, agree. Yeah, that's pretty useful to compile some article for a specific topic. It really good to great, uh, really does a great job for you. Um, okay, let's go forward and let's ask uh, ChatGPT to explain comments in Docker file above. And the same, uh, uh -huh. so it might exceed the threshold for chat gpt4 it's interesting yeah actually we have a yeah have a right hand please Mikola. yeah i okay. have like question or remark regarding uh chat gpt as well so uh how you Dmitro, or maybe <clears throat> someone else who has experience working with uh, chat gpt uh, dealing with uh, such cases that uh for example you asking uh it's uh how to <laughs> question from category how to uh, mm -hmm. defining uh, language, uh, for example, library, and it uh, pretends that generates uh, some answer. Uh, what I'm talking about, uh, for example, um, how to, let's say, uh, how to uh, call, no, uh, how to get name of RDS database launched uh, within uh, 
yeah, within AWS uh, by uh, Boto3 library. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, for such uh, API call, uh, there is uh, existing request. Uh, however, for some uh, specific cases, I, I uh, personally experienced uh, such cases, uh, it just pretends that there is some case, some uh, call to API. However, mm -hmm. when you uh, try and uh, when you check in the code itself, uh, trying to run it or check in documentation, there is no such uh, uh, such uh, request, such, such me method. Yeah. So, uh, have you experienced uh, such a case? And if so, how you are dealing with uh, that uh, behavior of uh, chat GPT that it pretends uh, to generate uh, the right answer. <laughs> Uh, could, could could you write down your question in the chat so I could just copy paste and ask uh, ask him? It's interesting what he doing. Actually, for me, I'm to be honest, don't use ChatGPT for like production for any kind of production. So we need to, and yeah, as as I said, we'll we'll talk about that a bit later. So you need to uh, check the answer. I mean, double check, triple check the answer what the chat GPT is provi provides you and prior to using in a real environment. That, that's for sure, because sometimes it lies. And even mm -hmm. uh, I asked pretty it, often. That, I would say even pretty often. Yeah, that's often. And even that, that's not a topic related to IT sphere at all. I was I asked a chat GPT regarding some term. Uh, from from like mining and but it uh, replies in the wrong way then i put the direct link to the article explaining the term uh, and say the chat gpt sees it's a correct answer um, and it replies me yeah i see the correct answer but you see there is another option that i that i provided you previous time so we have a both options <laughs> Yeah, yeah, actually, I can I jump, yeah, jump in again. Uh, okay, if you're familiar with really, really old uh, software like Spam Assassin, you need to train it to find out spam, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. for mail, yeah. So basically, mm -hmm. you get good mail, you get bad mail, you train it, uh, mm -hmm. and it started to pass to, to each word, yes, some weights, yeah. So in this case, it's same. So someone uh, say it's okay, <laughs> this answer. So it's trained like, like okay. So that's that's a problem. The <laughs> problem is you usually personally. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So ChatGPT needs to be trained. It's you might see you can train it uh, via API. Uh, there is some prices how to do that. So all the uh, this model that OpenAI is working on uh you can train on your own on your own data set on your own data or, or whatever using your own rules that set your own restrictions for this data model to, to reply correctly as you wish and for sure we are using just if you are using this personal just chat uh, it's training on the common data set so it might it might lie, so it's possible, and you can expect that, that uh, the answer that ChatGPT provides you can, can be wrong. Actually, yeah, let's move forward. Uh, I'll I have some couple of slides for that, the kind of philosophical topic, and uh, we, we'll back to that. Actually, if I ask ChatGPT to explain each comment in multi-stage Docker file, it does well. If I'm not mistaken, the same uh the same uh oh, i didn't ask so yeah. Th that's interesting the, this uh, this giants and different and doing doing in different way so different versions but okay and chat gpt 3.5 much faster as you might see Okay, that's great. But what if uh, we would like to create a Helm chart uh, for this image to be deployed on the, let's say, Azure Kubernetes services? Uh, 
that's curious because ChatGPT 3.5 usually provides the whole script in one window. And that's the, and yeah. Ah. Start writing something. Hmm. It seems that writing this in the, the really like in like in documentation. Chat GPT 3.5 I think should be much faster. You see. It will just provide the hand chart and the tit. Uh chat GPT number four. If I'm not mistaken, it's really short, don't you? Save it, just goes to the IP. Oh, yeah. I would not use that, actually. <laughs> that seems like an... I'm not correct. The images, tax, boom, service, queries, ingress, posts. More or less close to the what we need. Okay, and you might also refer in the previous example, ask chat GPT, uh, for example, to provide a Helm chart above for the production deployment, let's say using some security best practices and describe them, ask to describe them. Um, so I understand that, yeah, 3.5 does it much faster. I will see what is, what it adds. Uh, security context on this user, not bad. Uh, with only oh, file system, okay, allow privilege escalation, okay. It takes and the tech, cluster IP, annotation for Nginx. Ah, and then the security context here for Postgre as well. Um, yeah, you might see it, understand what you uh, what, what I mean actually. That's some actually security rules here to elaborate. Let's ask the chat GPT number. Or to do the same. So like from the first view, what I can see here, the ChatGPT version number four just more explain what it does rather than provide the concrete scripts or sp specific scripts or, or examples of code or something like that. It explains a lot, but without the, good examples, which is not available. Sorry, but the question was yes. about Helm chart, but there is a values file. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but previous, previous. Uh, oh, it's stuck. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. previous. Uh, previous one. Mm -hmm. Doesn't contain, didn't contain uh, any kind of. Any yeah, I see. That, that's interesting because when I, when I, let's leave that. When I generated the example for the presentation, let's move forward. That's for Docker replication. That's uh, recorded videos for ChatGPT number three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the same. Oh, yes, it's Docker file. Update the Docker file with multi staged approach. And you see. Yeah, it's actually do the same stuff, it's updated, so split it in the several steps. Uh, if I go next, explain, it's not so interesting. Let's go next, green the Helm chart. And if I'm not mistaken, it will provide the value of files, values file here. Because it references the values dot and cross dot pass. Ah, that's it. And yeah, Fask is the same, provides for like using the production security best practices and so on. Uh, generates. Wait. Ah, uh, yeah. It even it even explained me what the um, security best practices it used. Even added the health spoil readiness pro. Uh -huh. Okay, let's back to our engine. Uh, is it only containing on root resource limits for security policy? That's okay. And the YAML file, so it provides a YAML file with her, her code of the values here. Huh? It's not okay. Ah, it's values. So it's values, it's, it's in Helm chart. Uh, you see it sometimes just stop writing anything. You can write to him continue. And it should proceed. I think there is a limit for the APIs. Um, I 
So if you will communicate with the chat GPT in Ukrainian, let's say the answer will be shorter. It might be because of the limits. Mm, to be honest, this newer version is explains really more than the previous one. And in the previous one didn't say nothing about their bug. And cluster all binding and this kind of stuff. Let's get the paper look so it provides a release file. That's okay. Resources and needs one as user, security context, great. Then the helm chart, replicas, labels, complete labels, specs, uh, containers, and so on. What else? Create a template network policy, template for network policy, okay. Security policy. Mm -hmm. I've never seen this. It's like a Linux. Yeah. Okay, and actually, the last thing I would like to ask the ChatGPT for is to generate a Azure DevOps multi stage TML pipeline for the development and production environments. And if I back to that, um, the version number three, as I said, it's faster. The problem of it, it usually hard code a lot of uh, a lot of variables, actually configurations in their script. That's it's a, that's a problem. And you, if you, in case you would use it, you please pay attention on it to remove the hard code and parameterize those scripts somehow. <laughs> Sorry. You see the right values and provide the values and so. Oops. Hmm. Let's see. It does variables, image, image type, okay, stages, it's multi stage, build, 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 Docker. Push. It seems correct. Deploy to the development. Strategy, deploy steps, helmet style, okay. Can deploy Azure Resource Manager. Your Azure subscription here, your Azure Resource Group here. Namespaces, comment on which type field pass. Okay. Chat pass. 
and finally deploy to production. It's pretty the same. And then it explained what it does. Okay, it seems like fine. Any questions about that? Would you like me stay in some specific things? And finally, uh, if I ask him to prepare the documentation, including the creation Docker file, help chunk preparation and deployment of Azure Kubernetes. Um, as I mentioned, I'm pretty satisfied how it generates the documentation. Um, the version number three Do that a bit faster, but okay, let's leave that chat GPT is working. Um, I want to talk about some next thing. So, uh, how to use chat GPT in another way? You might find you might use your favorite ADE, but I'm fan of Visual Studio Code. You might find the chat GPT extension over the marketplace here, and I've actually found us something interesting. Some of them I, I've installed previously are not working for now, unfortunately. I've reinstalled, currently installed this called GPT. Uh, this seems to be created and this seems a Chinese. So code, code GPT seems a top from them. Um, I've prepared a couple of scripts here. So the scripts, as you might see, it contains the uh, actually issue inside. I'm trying to convert the string into integer and it should run into an issue. If I execute the script, uh, you can see I've used a couple of commandlets here, which is get chat GPT three completion and invoke AI error helper. Uh, data PowerShell uh, module, open AI PowerShell module. If I go there, and it's a pilot. Okay. It's open AI PowerShell module, so you can install it. Uh, just uh, install module PowerShell AI force. And that's it. It will install this uh, set of commandlets. And then you would need to provide the, your API key from open AI. Uh, you, you can generate it uh, via the site when you register to the OpenAI uh, slash APIs. You can generate the, your own OpenAI key. And uh, as I mentioned, if you're using the free version of it, uh, the top version of ChatGPT you can use at 3.5. And if I execute the script, uh, you can see that it throws an error for me. That, uh, I'm just output from the error output. And if I ask to explain this error via ChatGPT using this command like ChatGPT is completion, uh, it will generate an answer, an explanation. So this error message occurs when, when a program is trying to convert a string value to an integer, but the string value is not a valid format for an no, no, That's a actually a real good explanation. Not uh not so handy because if you need more you would need to provide not only the error but the entire script in that case it, it can try suggest something to fix this error and if i use this and work ai error helper it's kind of new command right now uh when i installed this module first time there was just this command that but this kind of new one it generates an error I don't know. I seems I'm using the wrong format. Okay, I'll take a look how to use it properly. Um, what else? Uh, when I well, if you install this code GPT extension and integrate with your ID, you can uh, actually ask this extension to explain the code. Uh, 
and it will display in the, in, in in a chat window. Or you might ask to find the problem. Um, in order to use the code GPT extension, you would need also to provide your API key to that extension. And fortunately, we have more, so you can try different different extension to integrate with Visual Studio uh, or your favorite ID. This one seems like okay for me. Uh, what else? Um, as you might know, Microsoft invests in a lot of money in OpenAI. And uh, it's a first cloud that's going to integrate, as I understand, the first cloud is going to integrate the OpenAI service in Azure. And fortunately, I'm really waiting for that, for the public preview of this service. So when I tried to go to the account and something like that, currently it's not allowing me to create it. I'm requested the service, but currently uh, I'm still on waiting next. So I'm really waiting the service to be published away, um, publicly. What else? Um, Chat GPT is to work on oh, this one. Let's quickly review the documentation it provides. A pretty nice structure that you see, it provides the prerequisites, create Docker file for Java application, prepare ham chart. Not enough information. But okay, deploy the application to Kubernetes services, deploy the Azure DevOps pipeline. Pretty short, but seems like okay. S some articles needs to be elaborated, so you can ask ChatGPT to elaborate some article in that case. Uh, what else? So pros and cons. Uh, let's yes, as, as I promised, let's switch to more philosophical part of it. Um, ChatGPT provides your human rate and output, and it uh, can add the explanation. You can also proceed with continue, continue phrase in case you are not satisfied with the reply, or ChatGPT just stops answering. Um, as I mentioned again, it's good for the documentation. If you provide a lot of context for the ChatGPT, it it, it could document, can compile the documentation article for you. And again, it's good for routine scripts, tasks, code, examples, automation, this part. So if the scripts are like standard, uh, it could generate it for you. And it's good for education purposes when you have some script and you would like us chat GPT to explain something what's happening inside. Um, the disadvantages of that. For sure, you need to have some knowledge to validate the response. Uh, when you see some response and there are some, some issues inside, you need to validate and you need to double check it in several, several times prior to, to use it in a real environment, especially in a production environment. And yeah, if you are new in some technology, if you are trying to educate yourself, uh, you are learning some new stuff, it might be difficult for you to validate the answer and get the correct output. It also could stop answering due to some limits, uh, as, you, as you saw. So it just stop answering and that's it. Uh, you might use continue phrase to let him continue the explanation. And yeah, that's also a problem. Uh, I did not mention it right now, but sometimes it might lose the context. So you're asking something, then you base it on the, the reply, the answer ask ask something more and more and more and sometimes it might lose the context completely and start replying something really different so uh, yeah uh, the extension i'll show for you that's a way um actually you can integrate the chat gpt uh in your like scripts in case you would like them to um explain some issues or some errors error codes or something like that the one of the suggestion from chat gpt 
I found it's it might be reasonable, but I didn't play it with that. It's try let chat GPT to explain the sonar output from sonar, let's say, and when sonar generates some advices how the code could be um adjusted properly. So the chat GPT could could comment it and let you do in a like more effective way from the from the chat GPT's view. It's also possible. And you could use your favorite language uh, to install the OpenAI modules. Uh, they are not official as far as I know, but uh, that's, uh, that are working. So you can install the module, appropriate module, and just to communicate with ChatGPT uh, inside your scripts or program. Any questions for that part? Silence means no, or we'll see some questions in the chat. Yeah, let's go through that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then chat GPT for BS, PMs, and HRs. And um, yeah, for HRs might be useful when you communicate and uh, when HR want to hire someone. And uh, I know these cases when recruiters ask ChatGPT to generate a message, for example, for some, for let's say Java architect, um, some intro message about the company. Uh, that works well. But yeah, you know, in order to communicate with ChatGPT properly, you would need to provide uh, context as much as possible regarding what you mean. Um, let's say I'm a recruiter, I want to hire some work some architect and uh, ask ChatGPT to generate a message, I would need to explain ChatGPT what the what company I'm working, working for and uh, what the project I want to hire this particular architect. In that case, it, it will generate more precise message. You would need to explain the context, definitely. You will uh, have a raise hand. <laughs> OK. Uh, does chat GPT have uh, access to the internet right now when you're talking with it? I'm curious because is it possible, for example, to give it a token to the GitHub mm -hmm. or, or kubectl, uh, kubeconfig file mm -hmm. and ask to uh, create PR with all this Docker file, home chat, and even uh, go and deploy it? Um, yeah, I think ChatGPT is not so useful in that particular case you have mentioned. I would uh, point you to another tool um, a bit later uh, that might be more useful, which is GitHub Copilot. So ChatGPT is general one. I think it could be adjusted in that particular cases, but again, uh, this Copilot is more specific to just for that. Asking, uh, asking chat GPT looks like asking for advice a student who read a lot, <laughs> but has zero practical experience. Yeah, uh, this answers looks like more theoretical rather than practical, agree. How to get non-current version bits from stage lines by using both? Ah, uh, that's uh, that's a question you would like me to ask. Let's, let's ask actually. And Nicola, could you validate this reply? It's not true. Since uh, the question was uh, only in quotes, so next it was just description to answer. So if you just ask it uh, to provide uh, uh, mm -hmm. how to get a current version, mm -hmm. that uh, he provided some uh, answer with uh -huh. uh, guest storage lens configuration but if you just ask are you sure that that 
uh, get storage. It's correct answer that uh, he mentions that he is wrong and proposed another answer just from my case. Mm -hmm. Understand. Is it different answers that uh, you have asked? Because I'm currently asking for the chat GPT for model. Okay. Mm. Snack second. Yeah. And this is not a single case. Can I suggest how to prevent it from generated? Pretending like two answers, how to make it say I have to answer rather than pretend. Uh, yeah, how could GPT be in the role of evaluator? It could, even as you might see, if you install this uh, extension in Visual Studio, you might ask him to evaluate the code, to explain the code, or to refactor the code, or to comply. Is that what you mean? Agree. Uh, okay. It could, but yeah, let's let's move a bit forward mm, and see on another tool that AI driven tools that might also be useful in in your work. So Jet GPT is it not only uh, we have an alternatives and the GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot, as you might know, Microsoft owns the GitHub, and GitHub Copilot is an AI driven tool which is currently based on ChatGPT. Actually, the GitHub Copilot X, which is a new generation of GitHub Copilot, I'm currently in a waiting list of that, and it have even more functionality. The cost of GitHub currently is $10, $10 per month, if I'm not mistaken, the subscription. And the price is, uh, yeah, $10. Mm. Currently, the general version of GitHub is, is available. GitHub Copilot X is still in progress. I'll see the approval for myself to start using the X. And actually, if you are registered with the GitHub Copilot, uh, there are plenty of extensions also available for you to your preferable uh, IDE. Uh, and the official one, so they are from GitHub. Uh, you can install it in your ID and just start using. So if I go there, for example, I'm just using a simple example, but you might train on some complex ones. You see, if I ask to write hello world, it can do that. I can get the current date at time. So you just play, press tab and it auto complete what the answer. Get the dice roll if I'm just want to have a random. It's working actually. Uh, I love that one. <laughs> uh, it's something new. Yeah. Just a little bit of fun.
I don't know what it does. It's fine. Um, I, I believe you need to prepare a pull request with that code. And, and publish no. it for, for review. <laughs> I. <laughs> I had some, something important. Okay. Uh, no, previously, you know, when I asked him to do something like that. Uh, yeah. It did that. <laughs> so now is it it started doing something more complex with a with a turtle library. Okay, so yeah, GitHub Copilot really great thing when you are coding and you just Oops. You can just start uh, pasting some comments until it'll uh, suggest the code based on your comments, which is, as I think, really useful. And what else? If you have some code snippets uh, like that, for example, I'm using PowerShell. doesn't work. Um, sometimes it's just hanging and you need to wait some time. Uh, what else is, is interesting? If you install the extension um, for GitHub Copilot Labs, it will provide you an additional additional functionality since this one and you can uh, ask copilot lab to explain some piece of code for example what it does and it will provide you a really nice explanation as i mentioned copilot currently integrated with openai i'm not actually sure what version of copilot currently is using it seems the version is currently available uh, it's, it's using uh, chat gpt version 3.5 but the newer which is copilot x should uh, should use uh, chat gpt version 4. Uh, the nice thing is it can translate your piece of code to another language. For example, you are, you write something in Python and you'll need to translate it in, I don't know, C sharp. And it will do something. I'm not an expert in oh, CSS, sorry. Let's ask Java. Yeah, it could translate a piece of code to Java to another language. It seems like nice functionality. And a bit more, it can generate a test for your piece of code and do something more. I didn't test these things, to be honest. But Copilot tricks uh, looks really nice. Um, uh, go back. Any questions regarding Copilot, Shirley? So Copilot is an AI-driven autocomplete tool. Its AI model is com constantly training, and it's constantly training over the GitHub open repos, and and on your code as well. So when you integrate the AI GitHub Copilot in your preferable IDE, it will read the code you have opened and uh, train it on top of that code. And and yeah, it's I mentioned uses Git. GitHub code base and the result actually is unpredictable. If you ask GitHub compilers to do the same things a couple of times that you might see it will do different. It can do that differently. Um, so yeah, it might be useful for routine automation as well. Uh, typical patterns of functions, uh, you might ask about that. Uh, or a new framework implementation in case, again, you are learning something new. 
Uh, for sure, GitHub Copilot can't replace the developer, but at least it, uh, if you write in pretty long self-explanatory comments, it would pro it can provide you a really good piece pieces of code. So it would encourage you to uh, to write comments. It cannot produce custom unique code. It means that if the tool is kind of new, so you implemented something really new um, on top of the market. So for, in that case, Copilot might not provide you anything. Um, and yeah, the code provided by Copilot should be definitely tested. The same for the chat GPT. You need to double check it several, several times uh, if that code is working properly prior to integrate it to the real environment. So how to work with Copilot? As you might see, you would need to write a clear comments with detailed descriptions. Uh, you can write a clear um, function names which correspond to the functionality and just start uh, start um, typing something. So in case you see that compilers do something wrong, you can start typing the things you are, you're expecting here, and it will it will adjust it for you his way and and provide you a pieces of code that's more correspond to what you are doing. And one more interesting thing, uh, which might be useful for the DevOps engineers. Um, I think mostly for the DevOps engineer, that a console-driven tool, which is AIAC. Um, I open a chat, AIAC, and actually I can ask to generate Docker file for Java applications. Actually, it, it does pretty the same with chat GPT is. It also uses open AI for the automation. So you would need to provide your open AI API key for the AI AC tool uh, uh, to work. And yeah, the file is pretty simple. Unfortunately, it was some um, drawback of this AI AC tool is that it can follow up the context uh, from your previous messages, from your previous comments, unfortunately. So you would need to explain the comment from the very beginning. And in case you would like to generate, uh, for example, generate Kubernetes manifest, oh, oops, not Kubernetes. And yeah, and sometimes it's just stop working and that's it. So, but this tool uh, looks pretty nice. If you would need some, get some examples of code for the Terraform code for Kubernetes, it works for Docker file, it works. Um, didn't ask them about any of coding languages. Like I didn't test it for the Python, PowerShell, for any, any languages. And just for infrastructure deployment. And finally, 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 um, yes, finally, one more interesting tool. I'm not sure. Uh, so if you're using the, uh, which is Notion, Notion. And Notion integrated Notion AI service, again, based on chat GPT, if it as I understand the Notion AI, um, Notion AI, the new version of it is based on top of ChatGPT version 4 for the newer, newest version. So you could also ask, read a Docker file for Java application. The good things of Notion, it's great for you the code with the code snippets inside that you might just copy and paste to the your preferable documentation and giant, whatever it would be, a confluence of, I don't know. Um, the beauty of it, you, you mark it, if you are satisfied with this example, you, you can mark it as done, or you can ask a notion to continue writing. 
and it will provide more and more and more information. And again, if you are not satisfied with the explanations inside, let's say the explanation is pretty short, uh, you might ask Notion to provide you uh, longer explanation. It, it will do more for you. So, as a summary, AI tools are very suitable for educational purposes at UMIC. AI tools might be helpful for you for the routine task suggestions and automation and so on. They are, <clears throat> could also be helpful for you to work in with documentation. If you would like to, doc to generate the article for some specific piece of code or some specific case, you might ask these AI services to do it for you. Um, definitely, you would need to have some level of qualification of maturity to evaluate the results. Um, and definitely, most of them are cost some money if you exceed the free threshold. For example, Notion AI, for now, it costs something already. Uh, when I generated this presentation, worked on this presentation, uh, sorry, it was free. And a bit bonus, I have chat GPT for in DevOps automation. So how chat GPT can be useful in DevOps automation and generate a lot of examples here. Uh, some of them we, we already tried, like generated a Kubernetes YAML, so uh, generated pipelines or something like that. Um, provide continuous security scanning and vulnerabilities. It's pretty good things. Uh, I didn't try it actually to ask chat GPT to, to assess the code. Um, like big chunks of code. The small code you've seen, you might ask ChatGPT to evaluate the code in your ID, but what about big pieces of code? I didn't try that yet. And that one interesting thing, so handling the incident response and uh, remediation by integrating with incident management tools like page, pager duty, it might be might be a good case. I didn't see that implemented. Uh, but that's that interesting it's can, to implement that and a bit more that's pretty sim similar uh, the same question but uh, different uh, different answers uh, and one more thing is if you're asking chat GPT to, to, to comment your issues with code or to comment uh, what something happens some errors pass some errors or issues from the log output to the chat GPT. Uh, that's why I'm pretty waiting for the Azure OpenAI service to be published and open it pub publicly available. So, and a bit more, and I see your messages in chat. I'm back to that in a while. Um, so the, according to chat GPT, and actually if, uh, if you search through the internet, there I mentioned regarding the DevOps 1.0 and DevOps 2.0. Uh, so these are concepts. And currently we are sticking, we are following the, let's say, DevOps 1.0 concept. That's our regular DevOps when we do the CI CD pipelines, when we uh, create the Terraform, what's the infrastructure code, and deploy some things, monitor something. And Etc. Etc. DevOps point O is aimed to be more automated uh, and um, bake it with uh, an AI services inside. So when you when you reply on the let's say pager duty incidents would be automatically generated by ChatGPT, or when some uh, trivial pieces of code would be automatically generated by AI services or something like that. So it's my understanding we are moving in this direction and uh, the, actually this um, AI services uh, became more and more powerful and I think in pretty soon uh, it might be useful and might um, like do a lot of automation for us. And yeah, my Facebook LinkedIn, I finish it.
questions. And yeah, as I promised, the DALI engine, I'm just ask DALI to generate a cute cat. Oh, I can, so. Yeah. Questions, I'll turn back to the chat. Could you GPT be in the role of a lot? Ah, oh, yeah, oh, so. Can compile at X to do the code analysis refactor the same as chat GPT? It, it can. Or is it only for auto completion? Uh, no, I think it can. Uh, for Copilot X, I don't know because I'm still in waiting list. Uh, list. I'm just using the regular version of Copilot. Um, Ah, it's a regular factor. I'm not sure if I have this option here. Um, I think it would, but let's see. Uh, I can't answer this question for now. I'll check uh, when when Copilot X would be available for me and can answer. Not sure if it's good in terms of security to a GPT extension company computer since everything that analyzes chat store it somewhere so there could be a leak or sensitive information what do you think uh there could be a copilot uh, i don't have a lot of code here in my computer to be honest for now and uh, they're just the te test samples on that yeah i would agree i don't think the chat gpt extension scan the code outside of your ide so it will just count the code that will, you will fit to, uh, to that extension. The same for GitHub Copilot. If you open the workspace uh, inside your ID, so GitHub Copilot would scan all that code inside that workspace and base it on your code that you provided and the code that access available publicly on GitHub, it will provide you the suggestions. And as soon as, as soon as it will be trained based on your code example, it will adjust the next um, next codes, uh, pieces of code that it will provide you for you. So it will adjust, it will adjust code um, based on your, your like coding manner, based on your coded style. I have one one comment regarding Copilot. Okay. Uh, you need to be careful with say using Copilot. It probably in most cases it's more uh like related to developers, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh there was a uh uh action lawsuit regarding uh the code that a piece of code that Copilot provides. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 it can violate uh, uh, open source licenses regarding the mentioned uh, attribution. So if someone will develop some kind of library and will use uh, the piece of code from Copilot that we that are under uh, open source license with MIT or GPL license, and uh, uh, if you uh didn't mention the author of of that piece of code or some some other things uh your customer uh can have a trouble with with all these things with all this license that's why uh, on our project we were asked to do not use we were prevented do not use copilot in to writing okay mm -hmm. let's call it enterprise code so you you need to agree this thing with with your customer yeah uh, completely agree uh, that's kind of yeah again for me it's uh, a bit philosophical topic but yeah you cast uh, you can be in trouble uh, and yeah you might be in situation when github copilot will generate you the piece of code that already use it 
in, in, in publicly available uh, in GitHub. It could generate the pretty the same piece of code. And um, in case the code will be scanned uh, with some advanced code scanners and so on, it, it could notice that there are some pieces of code like publicly available or some pieces of code, as you mentioned, under the uh, open licenses or something like that. And you don't mention, yeah, and that might be trouble there. Uh, thank you. For that any other questions comments the yeah there are a lot of questions regarding the the uh, actually this ai tools regarding the authority for example you creating some contact uh, content with open ai whether it could be documentation or something like that uh, is it unique or not um could you pass these checks for authority uh, later. It's mostly related if you're writing some public articles to public journals. Um, but yeah, it's a tricky thing for scientists, you know. Uh, you might already see some cases over the internet with when the, some scientists to, try to generate these scientific articles using these AI tools. And that, that's a problem. And yeah, you need to be careful with that. What else? Any other questions, comments? 